Hello again, Pastor Deborah for God Be Love, Love Is Here Ministries. And this is series two of mental health and the forever person. In the first series, which had seven episodes, we talked about a math, a new math, called one plus one plus one. This series, which is beginning uh, today and I'll have many different episodes in it is entitled the three realms this is going to be a little introduction into these episodes that are coming oh my goodness I got started a little bit early <laughs> people are still finding their seats okay oh my goodness got a lot of people here today from all over the world because the videos are starting to get known and some of my stories they're incredible are starting to be heard because they have been silent for many many years but this new series of uh, both the webcams and the podcast mental health and the forever person this new series like I said is entitled the three realms in these episodes this will be quite a few. We're going to dig a little deeper into ourselves. And the three realms that our mental health and our forever person live in. The first realm, which many of us are very aware of, is called the realm of the natural, the physical body, the temporary realm. The realm that we can see out here, and when you look at people, that's what we see. So that's going to be the first realm, and I'm going to break it up into several episodes to go through it and then talk about the professions that deal with mental health, some of the history of mental health, and some of the different uh, terminology and definitions because it's very real vital for you in your learning to understand terms and definitions most of us don't know what this people are talking to us the doctors or our therapists in the mental health world they sort of know uh, not a lot of people have a lot of history of it we're getting it in bits and pieces uh, all over. A lot of wonderful sayings on LinkedIn, a lot of posts. A lot of people are trying so hard to encourage us and give us words and give us some life skills and life coaching to help us. But it's hard when you only have so many nanoseconds on LinkedIn for a post. Or you go to your therapist or your psychiatrist or your primary care physician and they're under a lot of time pressure and they got to sort of move us in and move us out. So what we're going to talk about in the first set of episodes that area of the three realms. The second realm will be the realm of your soul which as I have taught you before has a conscious awareness part and a subconscious part. And we're going to talk about precepts and concepts and beliefs and thoughts and your mind and pictures and your five senses and how all of that is more intricately involved in your mental health. It should be pretty exciting if you've never studied it. Then the third realm is the realm of the spirit. It is the realm that the forever person lives in. Now, a lot of people know about it. I see them all the time in that realm. It's not a spooky realm, but some people make it very spooky, and it is very, it's very much with us here on planet Earth. It has good stuff and bad stuff in it. That is where our forever person lives. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the forever person and how he is related to and how he is affected by and how the world, the realm of the natural, the physical body, and the soul affect it. So that all three realms are involved in mental health. And they're all involved in the healing part of it. And so I wanted to just give you this introduction before I get started with episode one. So you'll be aware of what's coming. There'll be lots of different episodes. You know me, I like to talk a lot. And I have a lot of people listening and they're here with us now. 
And so I just wanted to let you know, welcome again to a new series of Mental Health and the Forever Person, The Three Realms. It will be up on the webcam, on YouTube, on the website, www godbelovedishere.org it will be put on the podcast of mental health and the forever person which you can get to from the website and I will also podcast it on out and uh, so you can listen to it wherever you are and uh, so this is real vital because the world and all of humanity are dealing with the mental health and the forever person those two realms are connected they are on planet Earth, and we have so many issues, and everybody, every nation, every organization, the UN, every loving faith-based person, every loving faith base, for every religion, everybody's trying to solve these problems. So I'm trying to come in and just give you some basic information that when you're out there and you're trying to get healed, or find a proper uh, person to help you that you'll have a little bit of information that you can ask some intelligent questions you can research all this out a lot of it's on YouTube it's out on the internet Wikipedia so you become an informed person so you can know how to find the healing that you need and a little bit more about the mental health and the forever person so this is the introduction to the new series of mental health and the forever person the three realms and they are again that's right the natural realm which includes the physical body that is correct and the mental emotional realm that is correct that deals with the soul it's conscious and it's subconscious and the realm of the spirit yay that's right so we're going to be going into those in more detail. I can't take you right there, jump you off the, and throw you into the deep end of the pool where I live most of the time because it takes a lot of work to get there. You got to learn to swim. You got to learn to bob your head under the water, hold your breath, uh, all kinds of things before you can get a lot of realizations of what's going on. But welcome. I hope to get this up today as quick as I can. I am multitasking. Tomorrow, I, and which is Saturday and Sunday, I will be in two days of training on suicide prevention and support group for the community. Uh, one of the people that's learning how to uh, help them, because it's suicide, it's in every place, it's ever, even in the jails and the prisons. We just heard about a big case about that one uh, right here in America. So is suicide real? Yes. Is it happening to, to every na in every nation and every culture? Yes. Is it happening to every profession, men, boy, children? Yes. I have known five-year-old kids try to kill themselves. No, you don't. Put, if they come out of heavy-duty abuse, they will. So this is the introduction, the three realms. I hope you enjoy it and hope you come back. Love always and forever, Pastor Dick. Look at the board, bank your notes, get you a new notebook or tablet or whatever you use and make the notes. See you in a bit. <clears throat> Hello. Pastor Deborah here, and welcome again to Mental Health and the Forever Person. This is series two called The Three Realms, and this is going to be episode seven, and we are currently working in the second realm of the soul, the subconscious area. Last episode six, we talked about what is a personality? How is a personality developed? Because that is one of the areas that the mental health professional, whether it's a psychiatrist, psychologist, licensed counselor, life coach, is looking at. What is this personality? How has it been developed, affected, 
uh, where does it need some tweaking, what is its dominant uh, person and personality. What we're learning that if you have early childhood trauma, this personality can be affected for many, many, many years. So that was Last Tapes, Episode 6. This one, Episode 7, we're going to talk about another area that the psychiatrists and mental health counselors, social workers, professional counselors look at and to diagnose and to treat. And it's called mood disorders. A mood is your emotions, your feelings. They are looking to see whatever your feelings, your moods are, are they in balance? Or are they swinging so far out of line that you've lost control? Are they, we'll use uh, grief, we all go through it. We all have days where we feel sad. We lose something, a loved one, a pet. We lose a job. We grieve. A death has occurred. We all go through this. And there's usually a time period that's pretty normal. We have days we're angry and mad and sad. Days we just kind of numb. Days that we deny it happened. But we all go through it. And that's normal. It's only when that grief turns to tremendous sorrow that it puts you to bed, you can't eat, you want to kill yourself. It has become so out of balance outside of the normal frame that most people go through that now we have a mental health problem because you're sort of stuck in a mood, an emotion, a feeling that is so powerful it's overwhelming you. You can't think, you can't eat, you can't sleep, you can't, it won't come back into balance. It's like you take a rubber band and you stretch it, and it's right here. And you know it's gonna pop, okay? But in grief work, it's like this, we go like that and then we come back. And then we go along and we're okay. So the mood disorders is your feelings, it's your emotions. The psychiatrists are looking at that to see are they sort of in this normal range that most people, like on a bell curve, go through. Because we have days we're happy, days we're angry. We go through sadness, rejection. We all handle it. They're looking to see how do we respond also. How does our personality respond? Do we respond appropriately according to by not breaking the law? Do we respond to it by not becoming violent and hurting things? Do we respond to it uh, appropriately? Maybe we drink, but we don't drink excessively to become addicted. Do we deal with it appropriately? Maybe go exercise get it out and we don't beat somebody up. So they're looking at your moods. Major, major or, uh, disorder that they're looking at. That's why they ask you so many questions about how are you feeling? How does that make you feel? How do you handle your feelings? How have you handled them in the past? Because they're looking to see they know a human being. The soul part the subconscious that Freud taught us. They know we have feelings. They come, they go. Some of them are, most of them are related to chemicals, hormones. Wait till you, if you were a female and you went through menopause, your hormone will change. Or you get pregnant, you can have a wide range of moods. Okay? So the scientists know, the psychiatrists know that hormones, biological content, Foods, alcohol, drugs can all affect your brain that affects your emotions. So they're trying to find out if there's such a deep chemical imbalance up here that your moods, your emotions, your feelings are out of sorts. You're swinging, wildly, and doing crazy stuff, what they call crazy. 
You're being violent. You can't control your anger. Can't get your, okay, you're hurting things. You're yelling. You're screaming. You're hitting. You're kicking. Or you get so depressed you go to bed for six months. Or you're so fearful, you're feeling fear, feeling fear. You can't go out outside your house. So they're looking at your feelings, your emotions, your moods. And they're trying to find out, are they within this normal range? Or has something biological up here, chemical, some sort of trauma, memory, is that affecting the normal range, what they believe and have studied for a human being? They know that in animals, if they get a virus called rabies, they go nuts, okay, become violent. So they're looking, do you have something up here that's in a, a chemical imbalance, a tumor? Uh, are you missing some chemicals, uh, some salt, some magnesium, some zinc, potassium? Are you, is your brain dehydrated? Have you had head injuries? Could any of that, your hormones, your thyroid, your glands, your diet, your appetite, what happened if you ate nothing but sugar? This is a true story. I can tell it. It was years ago. There was a lady. She killed her husband or something. And you know what her defense was? The reason she did that? She ate too many Twinkies. She had too much sugar in her system. It was the Twinkies' fault. It was the sugar fault that threw her system into this strange mood to want to kill somebody. Excuse me, my nose is itching. That was her defense. Ate too many Twinkies. Can if you have too much sugar in you make you irritable? Yes. Can't sleep? Agitated? Sounds bothering you? Yes. So we all know if you get tired and you're not sleeping, you're irritable, your moods, you're set off like that. You lose your temper. Why? You're tired. If your diet's wrong, getting too much of anything, lack of water, excuse me again, Will it affect your moods? Yes, because there is a correlation between your biological brain, all your systems, your body. If I take a knife and put it in my arm, my nerve endings are going to hurt. It's going to produce, right up to the brain, pain. I'm going to feel pain. Or I'm going to feel pleasure all up here. So the psychiatrist, the mental health professions, when you get in there, they're looking to see are you, how are your moods? How are you feeling? Are you in balance, out of balance? Is something dominating? You're angry all the time. Is there a mood disorder? They're going to look at your sleeping habits. They're going to look at your diet, I hope. Or you got too much sugar. I'm going to look at your heart. They're going to look at everything. Because they're trying to determine we all get angry. But what do you do? Do you stay angry forever? Do you take criminal activity? Do you abuse people with your words and your actions? So they're also looking at how do you resolve your feelings? How do you treat other things and people with your feelings? So they're looking at not only what you feel, your mood, and is it in what they believe is a normal range of intensity, time frame, and are you going through the certain steps to return back to this normal balance? They have something now they are trying to work with, that they have so much suicide, so much people that don't have any hope, and they're trying to find out what is hope. 
And how do you be more positive? How do you be more encouraging? How does that help somebody through a time of great crisis? You'll hear it. Uh, tornadoes come, wipe out a house. Somebody's devastated, but they say, that's okay. We're still here. They have hope. So they're looking at all of this as a mental health professional. They're trying to decide, do you have a mood disorder? That you're, you swing and you get stuck here. And you can't come back. Or you're swinging like this. Or when you're swinging, my brother used to swing, called bipolar, get stuck in depression. Long, long time. And he could never get back to the middle. Or he'd swing to manic. Or he'd be just swinging all the time. See, that's not normal. We all go through little at times of depression. When someone's mood, their emotions, are out of disorder and not able to return to some type of normalcy. And the moods and the feelings do not, are not able to be controlled. So there's no criminal activity, no abuse, no uh, substance disorder, no addictions. Then someone is pretty much considered mentally healthy. So when you get into therapy, the psychiatrist and the th uh, therapist in mental health are looking for any mood disorders, any out of normal range emotions, not able to handle memories, not able to compartmentalize your feelings, not able to deal with just everyday normal situations, family, relationships, work, loss, excitement, uh, rejection, uh, likes or dislikes on Facebook, uh, not being the, the winner, not able to handle emotionally what's going on. And where do these moods, these emotions get developed? Childhood. How are we developed through our parenting, our culture, our faith-based organizations, what our experiences are? Are our moods and does feelings chemical? Yes. Are they biological through our experiences of pain and pleasure? Yes. Is it our ideas and our concepts and our thoughts and our feelings? About a situation? Yes. Is it our interpretation of a situation? Yes. Is it our personality development that determines how we're going to respond? Why do some people respond with lots of hope? Can do attitude, and other people give up, quit. Too hard. Don't want to fight. Is this part of the personality? Yes. So in psychiatry, mental health, they are looking at your moods, your feelings, how they're developed. They kind of know how they're developed. They're trying to help you learn to regulate them, find a balance within them, find proper expression for them. Also try to help you to discover why you do what you do and how it is based on your moods, your feelings, regard, and your perceptions. And how maybe your feelings and your moods are developed from your perceptions, your ideas, your faith-based communities, your culture. And they're saying to be what they consider normal mental health with no disorders, no illnesses, no diseases. One, can't have any genetic defects. Two, you can have all these emotions, but you cannot break the law. 
abuse something. Get out of whack. Stay in bed for six months. Attempt to kill yourself. That's not normal. So they are, when you get in therapy, they go, how are you feeling? Tell me, how does that make you feel? What do you think about this? How could you have felt or done something differently? How could you have handled yourself differently? How could you have responded with your feelings differently? How does that look when you respond this way? Maybe you misinterpreted what they said or what was happening to you. And therefore, through your misinterpretation, you felt wrong. Maybe how you responded in feelings was inappropriate. Maybe you didn't hear or you didn't understand what the word said. How could someone look at a picture, a painting, and some people go, wow, look at the creativity of that person. That's amazing. And then how could someone else look at it and cry and feel the emotion that's behind it and feel and, and, and sort of hear a different spiritual quality to it? How could somebody else look at the same painting painting and laugh and I see how silly what they just did that doesn't look like a painting doesn't tell me nothing it's all crazy when you look at some of the paintings of modern artists what are they talking to us so is it your perception is that based on are your moods based on your perception your concepts your beliefs your experiences what you've been taught through your parents, your family, your culture, your faith, your nation. So are your feelings a response to beliefs, to how you interpret situations? Are they a part of that or, or just biological? So when you get into the mental health system, all they know is you're not acting what they consider to be normal. They figure if we give you some medication, calm things down, sedate you, get you calm down so you can think, so you can get control of your feelings through thinking. So when you get in therapy, a lot of your thought, I used to do this. Well, tell me, how does that make you feel when so-and-so says that? How does that make you feel when this happens to you? Why do you think they did this? Try, that's interpretation. How could you respond to it in feelings differently? How could you make a different decision based on your new feelings and interpretation? So feelings are an integral part. Your mood is an integral part of mental health. If they give you a medication, does that solve the mood problems? Does it take away your concepts, your interpretations, your responses to something? Let's, we'll use grief, depression. Let's say you lost somebody or a pet. Now you're grieving. And you've had a lot of other losses, rejections. And you just can't get out of bed. And they give you a medication. Does that solve your interpretation, the loss of whatever you had? Or is it just a chemical change in here? So now what do you do? How do you deal with the loss? Are we now getting into your just normal feelings? Are we getting into your responses, your interpretations, your decision-making skills of what? Your subconscious. This is where we're at, the subconscious that Freud told us about, that deeply hidden person down here that is trying to deal with life up here. Okay? Now he's a mess. That's what the mental health person is saying. This guy is a mess. 
plus maybe your biological part of you, your five senses, and your brain chemistry, a mess. And then if you, this guy is feeling so bad, he gets into addictions of something that brings chemical reactions up here, chemical changes, biological changes. Now we got not only this going on, but we still got the feelings and the moods. So in mental health, mood disorders are very, very important because everything you do usually is based on a feeling, based on beliefs, interpretations, concepts, thoughts, uh, reactions to situations, uh, and what and motives. So when you get in therapy, they're going to be working with your moods, helping you to figure out what's going on, how and what are the proper time links, the proper feelings you should be having for this situation. In grief support, they, you go through many different feelings, have many different stages. Sometimes the response to a loss is short, sometimes it's long, sometimes it lasts for years. You get over it, it comes back when a certain time of the year comes, you have these memories again. So memories are a part of the moods. How long you stay in it. So a mental health therapist, psychiatrist, he's looking at your memories. He sort of has studied what is a normal average response to anything and how you should normally respond in your moods based on your concepts, based on pleasure, pain, based on many different factors. Let's say you had a car accident and one person, they both survive, and one person becomes full of panic and fear every time he sees a car, gets in a car, and he refuses to drive, and then refuses to leave the house. But another person who has the support of maybe family, friends, church, faith-based, goes to therapy, overcomes that. What's the difference? Does support, therapy, medication, there's anti-depression medication. Is all of that important? Yes. We're dealing with the biological body. We're also dealing with the brain, the chemicals. We're dealing with your thoughts, your fears, your concepts, your moods, your interpretations, memories. It is a big thing. So mental health in the forever person, in the realm of the soul, the realm of the subconscious and the conscious, it's a vital part. And we thank those counselors who are trained, who have went to many years of school, the therapists, the psychologists, they have a call to help you with these things. They don't want really to see you. They want you to have a normal life. And they know things that happened to us in childhood. They call it now uh, trauma-informed care, adverse childhood situations, affects you even as an adult. Has sometimes a lasting effect on you. Other people find support in many different ways. Survivors groups, faith-based groups, therapy, friendly neighbor. So mood disorders are very big. They are one of the areas that is diagnosed with numbers in the DSM. And they're looking to see through the moods how that develops and is connected with the personality. They both go together, the personality and the moods. Personalities have moods. Moods are a part of the personality. They go together. So this is what the area, personality disorders, mood disorders, that your psychiatrist is looking at, your licensed counselors are looking at, 
and they are working on. Both of them are a part of the soul. Right here. Both important. So when you're out there as somebody who is being diagnosed with a personality disorder or a mood disorder, ask them questions. Help them, ask them to help you understand how they both go together and what they believe is the normal personality that you should have and the normal mood range. We're all going to be happy, sad, depressed, angry, times of fear. We're all going to have it. But what makes somebody fall into the range of having a mood disorder where their emotions are so out of normal range that it's become a disorder, an illness, a sickness? Is hopelessness where you end up committing suicide? Is that considered a mood disorder? When you're so angry at something, someone, that you go and kill people, is that a mood disorder? When you seem to like to look at young children doing sexual acts or hurting each other, is that a mood disorder? Is that the only way you can get pleasure? An excitement or is that a personality disorder? If you're what they call a terrorist trying to set your country free and you're willing to kill other people or kill yourself, is that a mood disorder? But you are so set on freedom and killing or is that a personality disorder? Or are they connected? Or are they one? This is the thing that the psychiatrist, mental health counselors are trying to figure out. And typically what happens is the psychiatrist gives you some medication. And then you go see a therapist. And the therapist's job is to help you understand yourself, your moods, how situations and people, how you're feeling about this and how maybe your feelings are irrational not normal or they're out of range and they need to come back into some type of normal thing and if you have some type of unforgiveness that has lasted 60 70 years and you're so angry and bitter they know that's not right that your feeling needs to be dealt with because it's causing problems in your personality, then it causes problems in your biological body. So it's all connected. And then the mood disorders are very important. How you're feeling. So what you want to ask somebody is, how did you get your feelings? If you watch little babies on YouTube and stuff, they're showing you just basic feelings. Their eyes are looking at something, and they smile, they're happy, or they get scared, or they get frightened sounds. So your five senses are coming in, bringing in information, bringing in pictures, bringing in sounds, and the biological body is responding. Now, a lot of times, a baby also looks into the eyes of somebody, mother, father. If you smile at it, it starts smiling. It starts responding to the close-up face. They start mimicking these gestures. Their eyes are looking. Their ears are hearing. Then they get a little older, they're watching. Why do people laugh? Why is something funny? Is that a, just a biological to a little six-month-old child? Is his eyes seeing something? What causes laughter? What in here causes you to laugh? Look at some of the pictures. They're the cutest little things. What is love between a baby and a dog? Is that part of the mood? Is, that the, is the mood 
developing a personality? Or are the moods a part of the personality that's always there? They're slowly coming out and developing. Or we're slowly seeing them and they're being developed. As the five senses bring in the information, the brain receives them, interprets them, and then responds back to them. Are your moods just a response to what you're stimulated, your eye gate sees? Are they just the response of something? So it's based on what the five senses bring in to the whole personality. Then the personality responds back to that in moods. And that's what we see back here, the moods. Or in front, the moods, the feelings, the anger, the fear. Is that all a response emotionally, mentally, to what the whole personality is feeling? If you put the personality in the center, you had rays of light come up, like a wagon with its spokes. Is each spoke one sadness, anger, love? joy. Okay. Is that all a part of the personality? And when the sensors bring in a picture or something, it stimulates that area of the brain, personality, to respond back in love, laughter. Is that how it works? So are they dealing with the moods? What they're really saying is the mood that we're seeing the response to situations, your feelings about it. They're not in a normal range. They're abnormal. But they're coming out of the personality. Their response is too long. Response is, I mean, some people laugh when they should be crying. Is that a chemical problem? These are the deep questions that mental health professionals are trying to deal with. They're trying to get a person so they can go through life with all of its ups and its downs, its losses, its gains, its rejections, its death, its birth, and respond within a normal range and not break the law, be able to go to work, have a family, not abuse them, not hurt anything, make a living, be a productive citizen, Now, that's what they want. Okay. And they believe that when the emotions, the moods, are out of disorder, I'm feeling this way. What it's saying is the personality, based on its beliefs, its concepts, its interpretations, its experiences it's had, it is supplying the foundation from out of it We'll say out of the center of the wheel comes a ray a mood. And if this part gets all messed up, the personality, you could have, it's like a spinning thing, you know, you spin that wheel. And whatever comes out, comes out. No control. So in <clears throat> mental health, in discovering mood disorders, which means your feelings are either abnormal, they are uh, overrated, they are too uh, violent, they are misconceived and misinterpreted. You're hanging on to the bitterness, the anger, the fear for too long and it's hurting you. And now the center part of you, your personality, cannot make good decisions because these feelings are dominating it. You can't have good relations with family, with people, with work, with the community because you're stuck. Something got stuck in certain feelings. And we're trying to unstick you and keep that wheel moving so you can respond appropriately like everybody else. So, in mental health, 
the th psychiatrists, psychologists, licensed counselors, even your life coaches, your support groups, they're all going to be dealing with your moods, your feelings. They're also going to say, what do you think about this? What's your concept, your ideas? One of the big topics right now is called something, I have my own truths, which means I have my own feelings, my own thoughts, and that's mine. That's how I interpret the situation. That's how I interpret, how I dealt with it. And there's nothing wrong with that. So that you have the survivors trying to tell mental health people, hey, I'm not mentally ill. I don't have a sickness or a disease. I'm dealing with my problems that I have faced in my way. Now, you may not agree with it, and you may call it mentally ill, but this is all I know to do. This is how I have been dealing with it and how I feel about it. And I have a right to my feelings, my moods regarding what happened to me. And I have a right to feel this way. And these are my feelings. So when people walk into therapy, <clears throat> that's what you have. A person that goes, there's nothing wrong with me. This is how I feel. And I think I'm feeling, I have a right to that feeling. And I have a right to my moods. And I don't see what you see. Because you didn't go through what I went through. You didn't get hurt like I got hurt. You're not living with your, my feelings, my family, my situation. And I have determined that how I feel about a situation, whatever, is my truth and it's okay. And that's what usually happens in a therapy session. So the therapist has a hard time. Breaking through the feelings, <clears throat> the beliefs, the thoughts, the memories, the concepts, the interpretation, the understanding of moods and of feelings. And they don't do a very good job of explaining the biological, chemical, electrical component of this and how that is affected and how your nerves and how the concepts you believe. They don't talk much about how feelings and moods are created. Sometimes the psychiatrists believe it's just simply a biological chemical reaction up here. So if we can give you some medication, those feelings, those moods, will dissipate of depression, suicide, fear, anxiety, then there's some pills, ain't going to help some of it. But that is sort of where we are with the mood disorders. One of the areas that is diagnosed and provides treatment according to the DSM. So I wanted to bring this section to you in episode 7 about mood disorders. Regarding your feelings, your reactions, your interpretations, sort of how they determine if you have a mental health problem, are mood disorders a part of your personality, and they're one. And if you get diagnosed with a certain personality, it's because you have certain moods or feelings. So they're looking. They're trying to figure you out. They're trying to solve some problems that seem to cause you in society, with your family, with yourself, with other people, uh, at work. They're trying to solve these problems. They know your feelings are involved. They know you have moods. They know there's biochemical, electrical stuff going on. They know you have are supposed to be an emotional creature. Animals have moods. They have love and fear and hate. All life has moods, emotions. 
Some of them can get out of whack if there's a biological, like I said about rabies, can appear in your brain. Syphilis can make your brain, and so all of this, if you have drugs and alcohol that change brain chemicals, what would be normal becomes abnormal. So you can have head injuries, strokes, brain aneurysms, tumors, and you won't have normal reactions. If you're blind, cannot see, there's no visual coming in if you cannot hear, so you can be very restricted in your feelings, and it all goes by your hands. Okay, You may not know what happiness is. But if you just touch it, can you be happy? Just the brain? Sure. So, sometimes people are angry because they can't see. I saw a movie on YouTube about a nun who took in a blind and deaf young girl way, way back in France or somewhere. And she was bound and determined to teach her to read through Braille and hand, which eventually broke through. And, but it, it killed her. She got very sick because it's very demanding. But you can bring, the, the, with senses coming into the biological brain, it gets fired up, kicked up, things are working like it's supposed to. But in mental health, something's happened. Either the biological, chemical, electrical, genetic, something is amiss up here. And is that causing the personality? and the moods to have disorders. Is this messed up because of your culture, your faith, your early childhood experiences? PTSD is a trauma occurred somewhere and now you're experiencing the post, the after effects of it. Has something happened to you, a trauma, an event? Though it's so shocking that now you're afraid that you're going to die. That's where mental health is looking at all of these things that have happened to you. And they're trying to determine what is the cause of these mental health, up here, mental, emotional, of the soul, the hidden man, the biological body, that you are having difficulties in relationships, money, with children, with animals, holding down a job, feel suicidal, what's going on? So I wanted to bring episode 7, mood disorders. When you hear that word, think, how are you feeling? And then the therapist is going to try to help you understand your feelings and try to help you change some cognitive, mental concepts, thinking about a situation so that your feelings and your moods will change. So enjoy this teaching. Ask yourself, look it up on the Wikipedia, mood disorders. See what they're looking for. So when you get into therapy, you say, well, how are you feeling? How does that make you feel? You know what they're looking for. They're trying to determine if you're responding in the appropriate, what they believe and been trained, mood. If something is supposed to be funny, are you responding in hate? Well, if you are, then they go, that's not right. You're supposed to be funny. Well, something must have happened to you. Some trauma, some event, some toxic environment that caused you to believe that this was the appropriate way to respond. So, this is mood disorders that the DSM will look at and they will diagnose to see what's going on with you emotionally and your feelings and how that is all regulated with your behaviors, your thoughts, your concepts, your decision making, your relationships at work, with family, with society. Because they go, something's amiss. You got a lot of anger there. Why? What's happening? How do we resolve that? What's your perception? Why are you angry? Why is it so intense? Why would you shoot somebody? 
Why would you traffic women, abuse children? What is going on emotionally with you? Why do you think that's okay? Is there a feeling involved? Is there a personality? Are they combined? They're looking. They're trying to help you solve some problems that you're having. That you've either noticed, your family's noticed, society has noticed. They're trying to help you. So cooperate. They're trying to be nice. Don't look deep into personal issues, your feelings, your family, trauma. You may not remember. Go look in your memories. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. So be a good patient. Answer the best of your ability. But this is mood disorders, which is your emotions. Be a well-informed patient and client. Study. And hopefully you and your therapist, your life coach, your mentor, your will get somewhere. And those problems that have been brought out, have, that are out in the open, so to speak, that have brought you into the mental health world, can get them solved. You can learn some new things about yourself, about the feelings. And you can get on with life. And won't come back to the mental health system. Enjoy. This is episode 7 of the Mental Health and the Forever Person. The three realms were in the subconscious, the soul, talking about mood disorders and its connections to the personality disorders, the biological chemical brain. Enjoy until next time. Class is dismissed.